it's like this you try to you try to make a strong package and you try to make it a diverse package where you have some bands that perhaps one uh, fan might only be interested in one band but he comes and he becomes happy because he sees the other band you know so it's very good if it's a slightly different style of music uh, which I think we sort of got this time uh, so I'm hoping that it would be a great tour actually um, but um, it's getting more and more difficult to put together a good package because there are so many other bands out and of course bands that you might want to uh, play with might not be available or they might be doing some other tour or they might have just toured or or something like that so to time it with the record release it becomes more difficult now in this internet age than it was before the internet downloading stuff started and uh, the reason is of course that uh, so many people have been downloading stuff that uh, bands basically have to take to the road to try to make money to make a living so you get more competition and stuff. but that's how it is yeah. you know somewhat appropriate and you know uh, you try to how would I put it I mean very often the booking agency has a good idea what he wants to put on tour with us and so it's like it's, it's a process that comes together over like a year I think we started talking about this maybe a year before the actual tour so yeah Not really. This union of, of there's always been separate roles, like this uh, label management, uh, merchandising. This is not something new. Um, the only new thing is, of course, timing. You have to be a little bit more awake because there are some, like like I said before, there are so many bands on the road, uh, and just competition is harder. That's that's the only thing. But I think on the other hand, with our kind of music, the competition was really stiff, I would say, in the, in the year 2000 or 2002 or something like that, because this music was so popular that a lot of smaller labels also would put, put to market this kind of music. And I think most of these bands have sort of disappeared or they change music now. So I think there are not so many people doing this kind of music on the level that we are doing it, but there are a few bands. It's not a union, it's just a music business. Some things are the same and some things are different nowadays. About how important it is, I don't really know. I don't, I don't deal with this day-to-day, -day, how many dates we put there, how many dates we put there. But one thing I can say for sure, it's usually a lot of fun to play in, in, in Spain. Uh, for a musician, because the audience is, is very into it, so you get a lot of lot of feedback from the audience. Uh, so for me, having these five dates, that's, that should be pretty cool actually. Like, whether it makes sense economically or not, I don't know. So this is like the kind of decisions that I, I don't even think of so much. Maybe I will know after the tour, but um, at the moment I'm just happy it's five days in Spain. <laughs> Eternal, it's we didn't really decide to take more or less risks. Uh, we made it the same way that we made Nemesis, which is just to write and to select them from what we had written, what everybody thought was the best material. So there's no conscious process to, to try to take less risks or more risks or anything like that. But uh, it's true though that the process and the people are exactly the same as with Eternal, so um, it's not exactly an Eternal, a uh, uh, Nemesis, I mean sorry, it's not exactly Nemesis Part 2, but for sure it might be having the same vibe, but um, I don't know, I still like it, so. It's again, we didn't really plan it this way, but of course it's a good song to start with, uh, it really sets the tone for the album, it's like high tempo. Um, but every song was written by itself and we, we wrote a lot more material than we actually have now on the album. Uh, so it probably feels like it was more on purpose than it was, but it's of course again still a good song and you know it stands very well there at the beginning of the, of the album I think.
Yes, Shine in the Dark. We have actually shot the video, but it's like this live performance video from Vakin. And I'm not sure when it's going to be coming out, but at some point surrounding the album release. I guess that's it. And we also made uh, a video for My Eternal Dream, actually. Um, and I think it's being edited as we speak, or as I speak, because you are not speaking. But um, it will be also month of September, I think, at some point it will be released. So that's like more of a proper... You know, not like not, not like live footage from Wacken that we put together with the song. This is like actual, there's some acting parts and there's like uh, some band acting parts and, and more like a proper music video. But they are both both videos. I mean, Wacken one is great because it was a great day. Uh, we played Wacken this 2015, earlier in August. By the way, I'm speaking now this 31st of August when I'm saying this, but the album comes out 11th of September, so... Around then you should be able to see two new videos, like My Eternal Dream and Shine in the Dark. I think the most representative part of the band is still Timo's voice, in a way. Um, but we have always... You know, the old slogan for the band used to be like, keeping the melody in the metal. And I think that's exactly what we are still trying to do. So uh, when you when you have that as a goal, I think you need keyboards and guitar. So it's difficult to say what's more important, but you know probably I think the key keyboards are more important, and Matthias thinks the guitar is a little bit more important. I don't know, but uh, they of course they are both essential to this type of music. I think. This I don't know if we can play this live. Uh, I think making the song, it's it was Matthias' song, and I think he likes this more sweeping, epic type of things. Uh, if you if you remember, he made this uh, Elysium song, which was like almost twenty, was it twenty two minutes or twenty minutes or something? Um, so I think, I think he just writes it. You know, he has quite broad taste in music, so I think it incorporates like a few different kind of styles. It's like, you know, anyway, like, nice nice Viking song for you there, yeah, like. Um, how do they come to mind? You 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 put one little piece in front of the other. <laughs> I don't know, really. If you play long song, crowd reaction is different depending on if they really know the song or not. So I think some of the long songs that we have played, like for instance, Visions. They get quite a good reaction, but still it's a long song, you know, you, you get like a lot of, it's kind of heavy for the audience to, to, to eat all this information. So I think uh, we probably will not play more than one longish song per set, even if we are headlining, I would suspect. But I, I would hope that we do this Lost Saga, but how it will be received, I don't really know. So. Good question. With the previous two albums, you mean then Elysium and Nemesis. I would ra rate it, if I had to rate it, I would rate Nemesis first, uh, Eternal second and Elysium third. But uh, it's probably just more based on the reviews, <laughs> really, because I like them all. Uh, but I, I'm perhaps, uh, I haven't seen enough reviews for this one yet. To, to, to know what people really think about it. But of course I, I still like all three albums. So uh, in some ways I like uh, Elysium a lot because it has this long song, like I said, that I think it's very nice. This Elysium song, 20 minutes. But I'm, I'm the kind of person that likes that kind of shit. So. I think it's, it's, it's a label's decision what formats to put, but of course if people want it, of course we will support them being made, you know, this, it's like vinyl or, or, you know, if they would like laser disc or some funny thing like that. What I love about vinyl myself is that the covers are bigger, so you can have like more, more spectacular sort of art, you know, you can see how the art actually looks properly. like. Uh, but some people swear by vinyl, I'm not exactly one of these people myself. I probably would not buy vinyl except for the cover art myself. 
I like this, like MP3s and FLAC files. But um, CDs I'm not so big fan of either because they are kind of messy, you have to deal with this physical thing. But um, I don't know. Um, I think if, if people want it, of course they should be able to buy it. That's very difficult to say. Um, I would say that we are... It's a completely different era than the success. I would say the, first, the previous big success period was like around 1999 or 2000 or 2001 when we released this Infinite album. Uh, Sales-wise, we sort of peaked in some ways. But of course the record industry was great back then and the scene was great. So the scene has changed so much. I think the, the band is definitely in a completely different phase of its career. Um, I don't know, you can't really compare, I think. Um, but, but of course, we are still selling, if you compare to other acts, we are actually selling very well. Uh, I don't know if we are selling better or worse than we were in 2001, but um, I would say you can't compare even, like, because it's, it's a completely different band, different writing system. Everybody's writing and uh, industry has changed a lot since 2001 and the scene, the metal scene has changed a lot. So it's almost as if it's a different band. That's my answer. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this kind of lame answers and um, sorry that it took a while to, to get this out. And I hope you enjoy the album, people, and um, see you in Spain. Bye bye.